Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about 10 different fragrances that stand out from their own brand. So these are almost like outsiders in a sense. They don't necessarily fit in all that well, but that doesn't mean that they're bad fragrances. They're just a little different. So let's go ahead and jump into this, talk about these outlying fragrances and what does make them different. All right, first up, this one I think is really obvious, so that's why we're doing it right away. Guilty Absolute from Gucci. Gucci Guilty is a line of fragrances that's really well known for just being easy to wear and compliment pulling. Do they have great performance? No. Are they hyper unique, really original? No. But do they sell very well and are they extremely popular with younger guys? Yes, absolutely. Gucci Guilty does get crapped on sometimes. People will you know, take shots at it for not being the most original fragrance line on earth. But what they set out to do with the fragrance line, they do really well. Enter Guilty Absolute. This one is none of the things that I just talked about with Gucci Guilty. Is this easy to wear? Not for most people. Is it weak in terms of performance? No, no, it's pretty strong. It's got leather, cypress, vetiver, and patchouli, kind of a medicinal feel to it, and the leather is right there as soon as you spray it on, and it's there until the fragrance dies away and, and goes off your skin completely, which is gonna take a while. So whereas every other fragrance in the Gucci Guilty line is made pretty much to appeal to everybody, this was made to appeal to a really small number of people, which would explain why Guilty Absolute has not sold very well. Me personally, I think it smells awesome. I love it, absolutely love it. I think that it's a fantastic fragrance, does its own thing, and I really, really respect Gucci for kind of just throwing a curveball out there with this one. But does it fit in with every other fragrance in the Gucci Guilty line? No, <laughs> not at all. And for the guys out there that are big fans of Gucci Guilty, and you know, that's the style of fragrance that they wanna wear, I'm sure that they had a big surprise when they went to the store, saw a new Gucci Guilty, and they were like, oh man, let me get some of that. And then they went ahead and sprayed it on and went, <gasps> What is this? So not for everybody, doesn't fit in with the line, but is it good? Yeah, it's good. Next up, we've got a Versace fragrance and the fragrance that I'm going with, the Dreamer. This one really truly is just its own thing. It's the only fragrance that comes in this bottle and what a bottle it is. I think it looks fantastic. A little atomizer built in here. It's got a nice Italian look to it. Stylish. It has lavender, tobacco, tonka sage, and some floral notes. And the Dreamer, really, all the way around, is its own thing. From the bottle, to the smell, to the packaging, there's only one, the Dreamer. And at discounters, this costs next to nothing. So another big bonus there. Versace nowadays is more well known for Eros, uh, Versace Pour Rome, Versace Mano Fresh, and Versace Dylan Blue. I don't know why I said Versace before every one of those things. You knew what I was talking about. So they're more well known at this point for those really easy to wear, compliment pulling kind of fragrances, whether it's a clubbing scent with Eros or just an everyday wear like Dylan Blue. The Dreamer does have a little bit of a throwback feel to it, you know, a, a 90s vibe to it, but I think it still smells amazing. The opening is sometimes a little bit divisive. Some people don't like it personally. I think it's the best part of the fragrance. There will come a day that the dreamer is discontinued and it's difficult to find. That day is not today, thankfully, but that day will come and I'll be really bummed when it does. You can just tell that the, the direction Versace is going, fragrances like the dreamer, those aren't gonna be coming out again, at least not anytime soon. Next up, YSL, yes, Yves Saint Laurent. And we're going with M7 Oud Absolu. Also could have gone with Koros, but I decided to go with this one. This, of course, is a re-release of M7, which is, at this point, a modern classic men's fragrance, which is discontinued and pretty hard to find, at least for a decent price. This has patchouli, myrrh, mandarin orange, and oud as some of the notes in the fragrance. The oud here never really gets dirty or fecal or, or funky or anything like that. It's more of a dark, semi-sweet, woodsy uh, scent profile. Nowadays, of course, Yves Saint Laurent, most well-known for their Lanouille de Lome and Lome flankers and the Y line of scents. 
That seems to be pretty much the entirety of the focus of the brand at this point. And some people love that, some people hate that. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. A lot of the classic fragrances from Yves Saint Laurent are so good. <laughs> they are fantastic. So that part of me that really loves their back catalog, you know, I wish that they would come out with some things like that. But at the same time, I understand what sells and that's what they're playing into. M7, always been a favorite of mine. M7 Oud Absolu, the next best thing. And uh, that would never come out nowadays with what YSL is doing. Next up, we've got Armani. We're going with this one, Diamonds. This one is technically Emporio Armani. So nowadays they are doing stronger with you, of course, and, and all the flankers that come with that. And then on Giorgio Armani side, pretty much all code and Aquilujo at this point. This one has cacao, amber, Sichuan pepper, guyac wood, and bergamot as some of the notes in the scent. So when you first spray this one on, it's very fresh with that bergamot, that citrus opening. As it dries down though, it gets warmer, it gets sweeter, and it's got a good amount of depth, more than you might expect when you first spray it on. And some people actually compare this to Valentino Womo, just the original Valentino Womo. I don't think that they're, they're super close, but once this does dry down, it gets into a similar style as that one. And with this one sticking out on top of the scent profile, just take a look at the bottle doesn't really fit in with the rest of the uh, Armani lineup nowadays. Next up, we're going Paco Rabanne and what does not fit in nowadays? Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Now, let me tell you guys straight up, I love Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. This came out in 73. So this came out before everything else that's on the market with Paco Rabanne right now. But with the, the path that Paco Rabanne has taken, this just doesn't really mesh all that well. Now, that being said, I do not think they should discontinue it. I love this stuff right here. This is a classic barbershoppy masculine fragrance. Put hair on your chest. Can't hurt, you know? I, I don't think it's scientifically proven to put hair on your chest, but couldn't hurt. Lavender, oak moss, honey, and rosemary, some of the notes in the fragrance. Actually a great pickup, a great steal from online discounters because it doesn't cost that much at all, really. And this is one of the reasons some people bemoan Paco Rabanne nowadays because, you know, in the past, they were known for fragrances like this one. And nowadays, the Invictus and all the flankers, one million and all the flankers, and uh, people miss this classic stuff. I will tell you though, just looking at this bottle, how simplistic it is, how clean it is, it's hard to dislike it. Just the whole package is really nice. Does it fit in with Paco Rabanne now and their really overly sweet fragrance offerings? Nope. This next one is becoming a little bit more difficult to find. Actually, a lot more difficult to find. Once upon a time, this was a fragrance that was under $30. I believe that for the smallest size bottle, you could actually find it for about 20, maybe four or five years ago. I checked before this video, because I know it's been getting harder to find, and it's not on FragranceNet, it's not on FragranceX. And the one website I found it on, they were asking about $80. It is Bulgari Black, the little hockey puck. It has leather, vanilla, green tea, and sandalwood. A lot of people will tell you it has kind of a rubber smell to it, and that makes sense when you look at this bottle, because all of the black on the outside is rubberized, kind of like a tire. It's a very smooth, vanillic leather fragrance. It's got a touch of powder in there as well. Some people will compare it to the discontinued Midnight in Paris. And it's also got a, a slight similarity to Lunarosa Black. Although between the two, Bulgari Black, Lunarosa Black, uh, Lunarosa Black nowadays is gonna be the better performer, you know, the better compliment puller. It's more modern, just the whole way around. But Bulgari Black is still solid, very, very good. And it's a nice unisex scent, actually. Women can pull this off as well as men. We're gonna follow that one up with Linsumi Ma Force from Lalique. If you look this fragrance up online, some places it doesn't have a great reputation, you could say. A lot of people have taken shots at it and crapped on it a bit. It's got green apple, citrus, lavender, and woods as some of the notes in the fragrance. And it has a similarity to Legend by Mont Blanc, which of course has a similarity to Fierce 
by Abercrombie and Fitch. So if it smells a little bit similar to Fierce uh, slash Legend, and it has a decent looking bottle, and it doesn't cost all that much, $30 or less some places, why is it getting all that hate? Well, mainly because it's from Lalique. Now when I say that, I don't mean that Lalique makes bad fragrances because they absolutely don't. It's just this is not the style of fragrance that most people would expect from Lalique. They have the Ancre Noir line, of course. They have Hommage à l'Homme. They also have their Pour Homme line. And all of those fragrances have a really well put together classic masculine feel, or at least the majority of them do. So Lalique has this reputation of having this, you know, fantastic quality for a very low price at discounters. And they appeal a lot of times to middle-aged guys and older. And then this comes out, which is going to appeal more to younger guys up to middle age. And so it's kind of like a fragrance that sits outside of the normal market for Lalique scents. And people didn't really take too kindly to that, you could say. <laughs> but if you are a younger guy and you want a nice fragrance with that legend slash fierce touch, maybe, maybe very slightly more mature than those ones, not quite as sweet, check this out. Now this next scent, I love. I think this is awesome. It's Kinzo Jungle. Cinnamon, citrus, nutmeg, cardamom, and woods, some of the notes in the fragrance. So you'll notice there, lots of spices. You've got warm spice, fresh spice, sweet spice, all of it, all together. A little bit of citrus in the opening. So that's just gonna kind of lead you into the scent, kind of hold your hand into the mid, and some woods as it dries down, of course, in the base. Kenzo Jungle takes a lot from earlier fragrances that have been discontinued, borrows bits and pieces and kind of throws it all together here into one package. And that's what I love about it. For example, I'm sometimes reminded a little bit of Gucci Envy while I'm wearing Kinzo Jungle. It doesn't smell the same as Gucci Envy. It's just, I can pick out bits and pieces. You know, I'll catch a waft and I'll be like, yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit familiar. Yeah, I like it. It doesn't really fit in though with the whole Kinzo aesthetic. Yes, it made sense to do a masculine version of Kinzo Jungle to follow up on the feminine versions, but with Kinzo's lineup, it kind of sits there in its own place, you know, it's odd man out. Kinzo, for the most part, is all about the aquatic scents and the fresh scents. And this one being a bit of a 90s, early 2000, warm, fresh, spicy, woody scent, it, it, it doesn't really mesh but it's friggin' awesome. And last up, we're going with Christian Dior and the fragrance that I'm going with, Dune. Fig, sandalwood, black currant, and sage, some of the notes in the fragrance. So this one is mainly focused on the fig and the woods. It's a fresh fragrance, not really very heavy, not overly sweet at all, a little touch of tartness. It's really well done, it just, doesn't fit in with Dior at all. At least what Dior is going with nowadays. Because nowadays it's uh, Dior Sauvage, it's Dior Homme 2020. I mean, Fahrenheit barely gets any play anymore. I mean, how long has it been since there's been a Fahrenheit flanker? Been a while. And I could have gone with Dior Higher, but at least Higher has a flanker with higher energy. So there's a little something tying it in together with everything. Dune is just there. Dune. It's super versatile, very easy to wear, going to appeal to a wide age range because it doesn't smell too sweet, but at the same time, it doesn't smell overly dated. I would say that middle age and up is going to appreciate this more than a lot of younger guys because it does lack a lot of that sweetness. But if you want a semi-green fig fragrance with a nice soft woodsy undertone, check Dune out. It's very solid, even if people don't talk about it. Now we've got one from Isimiyake. Low Blue DC. Rosemary, Cypress, Cedar, and Juniper, some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one is very much a woodsy and kind of green fragrance as opposed to being an aquatic, fresh, and citrusy scent. Yes, there's citrus in here, but not as much as you might expect, especially not with it being a blue bottle. You might think it's going to be very aquatic and, and fresh and uplifting and you spray it on and Boom, cypress in your face, along with some nice herbal notes as well. You might expect yuzu in here, big blast of it off the top. No, it did have one flanker, which was a fresher version of the fragrance. So it's not completely a fragrance that was created and, and left out to dry, but it doesn't really fit in with the low DC line. That being said, as a scent, 
and for the price, this is an absolute knockout. Love this stuff. There we have it. 10 different fragrances that stand out from their own brands. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow for another fragrance video. See you guys.